Okay, here I'm going to provide an introduction into the ideas of vapor pressure, cavitation, and boiling. So I've got some, some sketches here. I've got a, a sketch of, um, or a photograph of, of water boiling, and I've got three examples um, of cavitation. What you see common in all these photographs are pockets of vapor in a liquid. So in the boiling water situation, you see all these little dots of, of vapor that are coming up. Um, so that's, that's, that's the process of boiling. <clears throat> and here, with these propellers, these propellers are spinning around, and you're seeing vapor in the form of these little trails that, that are um, generated by the propeller. Down here, you can see more pockets of vapor. They appear as like these almost streams of of gas that are entrapped inside the liquid and they're moving with the liquid. And down here in this last one, you also see this um, stream of vapor um, inside of a liquid. Um, as you can imagine, this is a this is some sort of a an object inside of a water tunnel, and you've got water moving quickly to the right here, and as it goes around. Um, this object, it's, it's creating cavitation. So right here, where that vapor forms, that's called the cavitation point. And then as that cavitation occurs, then you see the vapor, um, you know, moving with the flow downstream. So to kind of understand the ideas of boiling and cavitation, there's three fluid properties that we want to keep track of. Uh, one fluid property is known as the vapor pressure. Um, second fluid property is the fluid pressure, and the third is the temperature. Okay, so when temperatures are high, so if we have high temperature, that leads to high vapor pressures, okay? Um, and when we have lower temperatures, we have lower vapor pressures. So the example of boiling is you've got, you've heated the liquid, it's gotten really warm, the vapor pressure gets higher and higher and higher as the water temperature rises. And then um, we get, so boiling occurs, which boiling is the process of these pockets of vapor coming out of the liquid and, and then moving into the atmosphere as, as gas. Boiling occurs when the vapor pressure is so large that it's roughly equal to the atmospheric pressure. So out here we have some atmospheric pressure. Okay, so when the vapor pressure gets so large that it matches the atmospheric pressure, then the vapor can come out of the liquid and kind of move up into the atmosphere. And that's what we're seeing here in this process of boiling. Okay, so in this case, the atmospheric pressure and the fluid pressure, so inside here we've got fluid pressure, which is very close to the atmospheric pressure. And so boiling is occurring because temperature went up. So temperature went up. Um, that led to the vapor pressure getting roughly the size of the atmospheric pressure. And so the vapor comes out. What's happening in cavitation, um, this temp temperature here just may be, you know, typical room temperature, say 20 degrees Celsius. So if we've got typical room temperature um, liquid here, then the vapor pressure is actually going to be pretty small. So in order for these, this vapor to form inside the liquid, what has to happen is that the fluid pressure has to get really, really low. So what's happening with cavitation is we get low values of P, so low values of fluid pressure. And so when it's so low that P is roughly equal to the vapor pressure, then these vapor um, um, pockets form. And then the vapor pockets, once they form, they're, they're transported with the fluid. Now the danger of cavitation is when those vapor pocket, po pockets strike an, a solid object. So um, this is the danger of cavitation, okay? <clears throat> What's happening here is you're seeing vapor form off of these propellers. It moves with the fluid the distance downstream. And then as the fluid 
um, brings vapor, these vapor pockets in contact with this solid surface, the vapor pockets collapse. And with the collapse of the, of the vapor, there's just a tremendous amount of energy that's released. And that energy is strong enough to damage. So we could see a lot of damage in this region here um, as a result of, of, of the um, cavitation. So all, all these, um, these, the bubbles could potentially strike the surface over time, cause a lot of pitting and damage to the surface. Okay. Um, this type of flow, this type of flow that here, where we have a propeller creating pockets of vapor, vapor moving downstream, it's not something that civil engineers necessarily come in contact with a lot, but um, when there is a pump, a pump will also have an impeller inside of it, and the pump can also create um, vapor pockets. So we do see problems with cavitation in pumps. The, cav the, the pump will start cavitating, it'll start generating vapor, and eventually that will damage the pump, and the pump will then need to be replaced because of the cavitation damage. Another thing that uh, comes into um, an issue for civil engineers is that you might have a pipe bend. So I changed my... Um, so suppose like there's a bending pipe that looks something like this, okay? So it goes around a corner. What happens is that we're seeing these, um, right here at this bend, you see this vapor form and the vapor forms and then starts moving downstream with the flow. And then if this, if this stream of vapor starts hitting, say this side of the pipe or this side of the pipe somewhere else downstream, that can cause damage there. So so cavitation, which is this process of generating, you know, these vapor um, pockets, which then can, can strike the side of a pipe, that's, that's something we want to avoid when we design pipelines, when we design pumps, operate pumps. And so um, just to recap, the key ideas here are up here. Um, so the understanding vapor pressure, cavitation, and boiling. Vapor always is going to form when... The vapor pressure and the pressure I'm sorry, and the fluid pressure are roughly the same. Okay, so in the case of of um, cavitation, what's happening is that the um, vapor pressure um, is small, but the fluid pressure is getting really low. Okay, so in this case, um, maybe just right here that what we have is in this case we have low low P. And in this case of boiling, we have, instead of low P leading to this relationship, what we get is um, high values of temperature, which lead to high values of vapor pressure, okay? So in the case of, of cavitation, we're getting, we're getting low pressure, which is leading to this occurring. In the case of boiling, we have high temperature, which leads to high vapor pressure, which brings the vapor pressure high enough to match the atmospheric pressure, and then you see the boiling occur. Hopefully this provides like a nice introduction to this idea of vapor pressure, cavitation, and boiling.